messed up What can figure it out That's how it chooses you Oh, hey, Teresa. Hey, Claire. What's the haps, Hepcat? Not much. I was just talking about my vacation plans because I get two whole weeks between semesters. It's very exciting. Oh, yeah. Teresa, welcome to you and welcome to everybody to It Chooses You Smidgen Edition. <laughs> Smidgen Dish. That's mm-hmm, haunting. Very nice. Haunting is the one adjective I want people to use to describe this podcast. <laughs> it's haunting. In, in like a clumsy ghost sort of way. A ghost that you hear fall down the stairs and you think, that can't possibly be a ghost. You think they'd have more chill, but no, they don't. We are haunting like a clumsy ghost. Yeah. Splat. Worst ghost ever. <laughs> Just not great at scaring. Having a hard time at its job. Teresa, do you believe in ghosts? <sighs> yeah, that's how I feel. If I believe in ghosts, I believe in cow ghosts and grass ghosts and tree ghosts and all kinds of ghosts, right? If I believe in ghosts, then it's not just the one lady who used to live in this apartment. It's literally every living thing that has ever been near me in the world right. in the history of time should have a ghost. I love ghost stories. Oh, yeah. I love a good ghost story. I love being creeped out, but I'm not. <laughs> Speaking of ghosts. Speaking of clumsy ghosts. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, lunch is being made in the other room. It requires the pounding of some meats. And it is beginning now. <laughs> it's it's happening. It's all happening. <laughs> well, it's great, actually, that we're talking about both clumsy ghosts and pounding things. Because the smidgen that I have for you today is the antithesis of those things. All right. Today I have for you Baumgartner Restoration. I have no idea what that means. Okay. Baumgartner Restoration is a YouTube channel attached to a painting restoration studio in Chicago. I think Chicago. I feel pretty good about saying Chicago, so I'm going to say it. And if it turns out not to be true, he'll know because he's very meticulous, which you have to be to be an art conservator. And he'll be disappointed that I have labeled him in the wrong city, but I'm pretty sure it's Chicago. Julian Baumgartner is a legacy... I almost called him a legacy hire, which is not what you call it when you've inherited a business from your dad. He's not a legacy hire. He just, he learned his father's trade and now restores paintings. That's his gig. Oh, cool. Baumgartner Restoration is a YouTube channel that focuses on the very calming, precise, meticulous work of cleaning and restoring paintings. That sounds really soothing and satisfying. It's very soothing and satisfying. And it's also hilarious because you've never really heard snark until you've heard an art conservator snarking about the other art conservators who worked on a painting. <laughs> and then, oh boy. I will say that I feel like I've been exposed to this particular brand of snark a bit through the show The Repair Shop. You do hear a little bit of. Very English passive aggressive <laughs> discussion about previous restorations or repairs to the objects. Oh, that's an interest. That was an interesting choice a previous uh, conservator made. An interesting choice is about as snarky as they get. Meanwhile, Julian Baumgartner is like, "Yeah, this is not how we do it. You don't do it this way." He's, the, you see all this overpainting. The the paint that was missing from this portrait is is the size of my pinky finger, but they've overpainted a, an area the size of two hands to cover up because they just don't know what they're doing. And I'm much more animated than he is. So just imagine that I'm speaking like this about how ridiculous the former attempts at restoring this painting have been. He never gets snarky about the art. His goal is always to restore the painting to how it looked the second it was done so that we can experience what the artist wanted us to experience when we look at it. The artist said, this is done. This is how this painting looks. And now 150 years later, it looks very different for a variety of reasons. His whole thing is being dedicated to that kind of integrity where he brings the painting back to how it looked the moment it was done. And he only casts shade on people who've done bad conservation work. He never quibbles with the artist. He's like, no, 
we're here to serve the artist. That seems essential to what he does. How wonderful. Yes. So he's never like, oh, this is a lesser known work from whatever. He might say that, but he's, but look at the beautiful quality of the light. And look how this shitty overpainting has ruined the quality of the light. This one section. You do have to love art to do something, dedicate yourself to a craft like that. And then he'll make a cotton. So he doesn't use, he doesn't use Q-tips from the store. He makes Q-tips. Oh. With sticks and wads of what I assume is organic homegrown cotton that he picks himself from his backyard. So bespoke Q-tips? Bespoke Q-tips that he very slowly and carefully with just a tiny bit of water or spit. I've seen him spit on them before. Just clean off the dirt. Solvent. It's not always spit. I mean, spit is nature's solvent. It's the solvent we all have available at all times. Well, they do say that saliva contains some enzymes that are actually... Cleansers. Yes, that's right. We can break down protein with just spit, but I don't know if we can do it if it's varnish, which is the thing we're trying to, to break down. So he's using a solvent of some kind. So he will receive a work of art when we don't see any human relationships in this channel, which is one of my favorite things about it. <laughs> he doesn't have an assistant. You never see him talking or even really referring to the people who own the painting that he's working on. His relationship <laughs> is entirely focused on the painting. Wow. And his abilities. And I really like that about him. To summarize, if you want to be an art conservator, a painting conservator, get yourself some bespoke Q-tips. That's right. Get those saliva glands a-working uh -huh. and ignore other people. That's, mm -hmm, you've got it. It might also help if you learn from your dad. Actually learn your craft. Yeah. I mean, be dedicated to something and learn it inside and out and, and really understand everything <sighs> about behind all the techniques you're using. I know. I make that noise too. <laughs> we, <laughs> Whatever. We're not like dedicated professional people as a type, at least not in that particular way. But Julian Baumgartner is by God, and you should watch his fucking YouTube channel. So the other great thing, I'm assuming that... <laughs> And it's not fair at all to assume this, but I'm going to tell you that I was assuming if I said restore a painting that you would have like a four or five step list of things you know need to happen to that painting for it to be restored, which is really not fair of me. I guess what I'll do is I'll just say every painting comes in dirty. Most paintings come in damaged, meaning the canvas itself has been torn or smushed or something has happened. And a lot of paintings come in with bad previous conservator work. He takes off all the paint and his whole thing, and I believe it's probably just what art conservators are trying to do. He seems like a very good example of the breed. His whole thing is anything you do as a conservator should be reversible because in the future, they will have better technology for this and they will want to fix the state of the art thing that you're doing right now, which is actually in the future, a fuck up. Right. Like it's correct today, but in the future, it will be a mistake as technology improves. And so he's like, whatever you do, it has to be completely reversible. So he puts layers of varnish between the painting and the paint he applies. So you can always take it back down to the original paint without damaging it, etc. I'm not here to tell you all of the steps. I'm not training you to be an art conservator. I know that's probably why you're here this week. And I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. I know we titled this episode training you to be an art conservator. But unfortunately, that's not what I'm going to be able to do. But I am here to tell you that spending 25 or 30 minutes watching this man clean, repaint, reattach to a new tacking edge, he puts tacks in his mouth and spits them out one at a time when he retacks a painting to the thing. I mean, that's maybe my favorite part of the whole thing is he'll be having all of these very specific, like, no, it has to be at this humidity and this pressure. And he puts it on a warming table that it's at 97.6 degrees and it can't go any higher than that because this particular kind of rabbit skin glue will do this if it is. And then he just literally puts a bunch of tacks in his mouth <laughs> to begin the start of that process. And the contrast between those two things is, is what charmed me originally. Yeah. <laughs> because that's disgusting and horrible and seems to be completely at odds with the precision of what he's doing. But he's like, no, the moisture from, from my spit, the moisture actually helps them, you know, secure into the wood or whatever. I'm like, that's fascinating and disgusting. Thank you. So Julian Baumgartner, 
Baumgartner Restoration is the name of the YouTube channel. And if you want to watch someone be meticulous, which I know you and I really like because we are not we, do. we are not meticulous in our daily lives necessarily. So watching someone do it is thrilling. And I have brought you Julian Baumgartner today. Vicarious meticulation. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing else. That's the answer. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so please go and relax yourselves by listening to the soothing tones of Julian Baumgartner throw shade on previous art conservators over at Baumgartner Restoration. I am so excited to watch that. It really does sound satisfying. Yes. In the spirit of Julian, I'm staying calm. That's You're doing a very good impression of him. And as excited as you sounded when you said you were excited is about as excited as he ever gets. So mm. it's good. You fully got it. You understand it. I need to calm down. <laughs> My apologies for that outburst. <laughs> yeah. And just being that quiet for that long, I really just want to throw a party in his, in his uh, workshop. He's got a huge, perfectly clean white, everything completely organized. It's not a painter's studio, Claire. Yeah. It's an art conservator's workshop. Right. The opposite of a painter's studio. That's right. There's no creation. The final thing I'll say about him is that he does tuck button downs into jeans and wears the belt. So <laughs> that's. I think that's the final piece of what you guys need to know to uh, appreciate him. I have a picture of him in my mind, and I really want to go watch it and see if it matches. That's great. We'll talk about it again. I'll report back. That's all, Claire. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for listening to It Chooses You Smidgen Edition. Please like, subscribe, and most importantly, download the podcast to show your support. Again, this has been It Chooses You, and we'll talk to you next time. Goodbye. Testing? Great. Thank you for listening to It Chooses You. Your hosts are Teresa Sparks and Claire Patton. Our theme song is by Bobby Dart. If you'd like to get in touch with us, drop us an email at itchoosesyoupodcast at gmail.com.